All right, in this uh, short tutorial, we'll look at setting up your R Markdown website using GitHub Pages. So if you go to the course website under Schedule, the first thing is getting started. These are some things I'd like you to try before we meet on Monday. Um, what you'll need to do is download and install R following this link, then download and install R Studio, following this link. Next, uh, create a free GitHub account by going here to GitHub and signing in. You'll have to create a username for your account. And finally, uh, download and install GitHub Desktop. This will allow you to transfer files uh, from your local computer to the cloud on the GitHub website. So for this tutorial, I'm going to assume you've been able to do these four things. Okay. What I've done here is I've logged into my new GitHub account. It's called BC Test Mat. I've uh, gone to my profile page. And because it's a brand new profile page, it should say something like this. You don't have any public repositories yet. What we're going to do is uh, copy an existing repository uh, into here that will allow us to set up a website very quickly. So in the search tab, I've searched for this already, so the thing we're looking for shows up here, but I'll just type it out. Crump Lab slash lab journal website and I'll search all github for that. Here it is. So I'm just going to click on this and we're taken to a repository on my lab website or my, my lab github crump lab. This repository contains all the code we need to get a website set up uh, using R. To see what the website looks like, you can scroll down and uh, click this link. Here it is. It's got a simple front page and a couple different tabs on it. For this course, we're going to copy this web page and then modify it, and you'll be using a web page to hand in your assignments for the course. So I'm just going back on the browser to the uh, GitHub repository with all of the files. If you have an account on GitHub, it's easy to copy anybody's uh, repository. We can do that by forking. So for example, I'm going to click this fork button up in the right hand corner. And what it's doing is copying all of these files into my own profile. So for example, we are now back in my profile or my test profile called BC Test Mat. If we were to uh, click and go back to your profile page, what you'll see is there's a new repository in it. We've copied the Lab Journal website repository and it tells us it's been forked or copied from this uh, Crump Lab uh, account. All right, so let's click on this repository. And if we scroll down, we see a bunch of files. We'll talk about all of these things later. Um, we'll be, these are files we'll open in our studio and we can change the contents of these files and then compile them into a website. All of the files we need to run the website go into this docs folder. Um, the way this is set up is that we can immediately create a viewable website from this repository. The first thing we need to do is go to our settings and we're going to do two things. First of all, we're going to rename the repository.
you can give this repository name anything you want. It's going to be um, the, the name of, of uh, your new website. So I'm going to click Rename. Okay, so now uh, this repository is named Matt Learn R. The next thing we need to do is go back to settings, scroll down to the GitHub Pages options. It says that GitHub Pages is currently disabled. We're going to click this button right here that says None, and we're going to choose Master Branch Docs Folder and then click Save. Okay, scroll down a little bit. We've now, um, so GitHub Pages is a feature that will take any of the files inside the docs folder and serve them to the web as a web page. And you should see something like this. It's a URL that will take you to your new web page. It can take a few, you know, 30 seconds maybe in order for this to show up and work. Um, so we'll just wait a little bit. I mean, we've probably waited long enough. Um, I'm going to create a new tab in my browser and I'm going to drag this into the new tab and let's go over there and take a look at it. Okay, so we are now looking at the web-facing version of the of these files. It's basically the website. And the next steps here are to figure out how to modify this website. So for example, how do we change the content on the front page? How do we change these labels? And how do we add new web pages and, and change the contents of these web pages? In order to do that, I've now gone back to my um, GitHub site. I'm going to look at these files here. What we need to do is open up these files and make some changes to them. Now, right now, all of these files are in the cloud. They're on my GitHub account. Uh, we, we need to be able to uh, connect this cloud account to our local computer download the files to our local computer, make changes on our local computer, and then um, save them back to uh, the cloud so that we can update the web page. In order to do that, uh, we'll use the GitHub desktop software. So I'm just going to search for that on my computer, GitHub desktop, and I'm going to open it up. So you should see something like this when you uh, open up GitHub Desktop. First thing you need to do is connect this uh, to your GitHub account. So go to Preferences. Uh, under Accounts, you'll want to sign in here. So I'm, I'm already signed in, but you'll put in your username and password. And here you can... Um, under the Git option, put your username and your user email. Then you would uh, save those things. Okay, this program is going to operate like a file folder for your computer. Um, first thing that that I recommend that you do. So I'm on a Mac, I'm going to open up a, a Finder window. And if you're on a PC, I guess go to My Computer or however you manage your, your files. And what I've done is I've created a folder on my computer. I've called it Test GitHub. I'm going to be storing GitHub repositories in this folder. Notice there's um, here on there's nothing in here right now 
So if you've successfully connected your GitHub desktop program to your uh, account on the cloud, when you click this button up here, this little drop down, you should have the option to add. And we're going to choose the clone repository option. Oops, clone. If we're connected to the web, you should see existing repositories that are on your account. So we just created one. I renamed it matlearnr. So I'm going to click this. And I now have an option to copy the files from here to somewhere on my local computer. Right now it's just going to copy this to the desktop. But I'm going to choose um, this test GitHub folder that I made. So now it's going to be saved there. So let's click clone. And here we have uh, clone the repository. It doesn't, I mean, it's, you might be looking at this and saying, what am I looking at here? Um, okay. Well, first of all, um, we can either go back to the finder and look in this folder and we'll see that there's a new folder in here called matlearnr and it has um, copied the files from the GitHub account into this folder. I'm just going to close the finder. Um, if you're loaded up a repository in GitHub desktop, you can also click this button, show in finder and it will automatically bring up the folder uh, where you've saved it, saved it on your computer. Okay, um, so we're almost done for this little tutorial, but I want to show you one more thing. The next tutorial will go into much more depth on this part. Take a look at these files here. You should see one um, called labjournalwebsite.rproj with a little R cube. Let's double click this. And what should happen is we will load up uh, a new RStudio application. We're going to be, become a lot more familiar with what's going on here. Um, and for now, what we will do is simply look in the files here and find the index.rmd. I'm just going to click on it. And this opens up a little text editor. Okay. Let's just go ahead and change the title here called My Lab Journal. I'm going to call it Matt Test. And notice the text file is red. I've, it turns red when you make a change. Uh, so if I press save, uh, I could go here and click save, or I could go command S. Now it turns black, meaning that the change has been saved. Okay, um, all we've done is uh, just change some of this text. I'm gonna show you uh, three more things. The first thing is when, whenever you change anything in one of these files that is associated with a GitHub repository, the GitHub repository will record that change. So if we go back to GitHub Desktop, you'll see that a change is listed. There's been a change in this file. We've changed my lab journal to Matt test. And we've done that on the local computer on my laptop right now. So for example, if we go to the website and look at the index.rmd file, it has not been changed. It still says my lab journal. Okay. So how do we push the change 
from the local computer to update the cloud version of the file. We do that in the GitHub desktop app. And in order to do that, let's see, um, it looks like, I see, the screen is a little bit small here. Um, under changes, we are going to, well, it's suggesting uh, a description of the change, um, but I'm just going to show you that you can write a description. I made a change to index.rmd if you want. We're going to press the commit to master button. Um, the next thing we have to do, and you can sort of see it explained here, uh, it's saying you have one local commit waiting to be pushed to GitHub. That means you've um, made a change on your local file and we need to push it up to the cloud. So to do that, we can press push origin. All right, so some things happened. Uh, how do I get out of that? Here we go. Now, um, when we go back to the web page, we should see that the index file that we changed has been updated. So we can see the, that it probably has because I can see my message I wrote. If we click on this file, then, oh, the title now says Matt Test. Great. Okay, my intention here is to actually change um, the, so I'm going to go to settings, I, I want to change the name of this web page. So if we go to the web page, I think I had that here, but let's just reload it. I'm going to reload. What I'm trying to do is change these words, my lab journal, my lab journal, to um, what did I have it changed to? Let's see. Matt test. Now, clearly, those things didn't change. Here we are still seeing my lab journal and my lab journal. However, in our index file, we're still seeing Matt test. We're, we're, we're seeing different things. And uh, in order to change this, what we need to do, we need to go back to our studio and we need to compile our website. So basically, anytime you make a change to one of these files, the text file will change, but the website won't change unless you compile it. You should see a build tab up here. So if you click that, then you'll be able to build your website. So let's see what happens here. I'm building the website. And, uh, <laughs> funny, um, it'll show the output in this little viewer pane here. If you want to click this button, it's going to show it in a new window. So you can see that here. And notice it still didn't change these words. Okay, so why not? Well, let's try changing this one. I'm just going to change it to Matt. And I'm going to press Build Website again. All right, so that successfully changed one of these things. Um, so clearly, the file that we need to modify in order to change this word right here is not the index.rmd file. 
part of learning how to build websites in, in R is figuring out which files you need to modify. Now I happen to know that the file we need to modify is called this one right here, site.yml. So if we click that and open it up, um, we will see uh, that there's an option to modify the name and the title. So I will just um, modify both of those right here, press save. When you save the YML file, uh, it will automatically recompile the website. But let's just do that one more time to be sure. So we're going to build the website. Okay. So we've made a few changes, both to the files index.rmd and to site.yml. We've compiled these changes. And just to let you know, what that means is um, files inside the docs folder, and if we click this, we can look at them. We can see there's some HTML files. Some of these files have also been changed as a result of compiling the website. So when we go back to the GitHub desktop, we will see all of the files that have been changed. We can see that the YML file has been changed, the indexed file has been changed, and a number of files in the docs folder have been changed. So I'm just going to give a description of these changes. I'm saying update website. Uh, my screen's not big enough to see this button, so I'm going to say commit to master. I'm going to push to the cloud here. Get out of this. Let's go back to the GitHub account on the web, and let's see if some of our changes have been updated. Yeah, we can see the update website changes have occurred. So th this file's changed, this file's changed, and some of the files in the docs folder has changed. The real question is, has the website changed? Um, normally these changes take uh, 30 seconds or so to complete. Um, so let's go to our website and press reload. And now that we reload this website, we can now see that the uh, these two parts have changed a little bit. Okay, so that's all for this tutorial. Uh, it's meant to show you some of the workflow involved in using GitHub, GitHub Desktop, and making a few changes in R Markdown for your website. In the next tutorial, we'll um, talk about things you can do to modify your website even further.